Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, she says her daughter can't stop faking pregnancies. She's done this nine times, and then she brings you this. I have two words for you. Photoshop. <laughs> you actually threw her in baby shower. She's got her mouth open. Just, oh, my God. At this point, she knows she's not pregnant. Now she's here to set the record straight. So what is the truth? Before you open your mouth, you have to make a conscious decision to tell the truth. It is unfair to make up a baby so that you can have a nice party and feel loved. That is not why I did it. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. I think I can speak for both Robin and myself when I say that one of the greatest moments in our lives was learning we were going to be grandparents. Well, my guest today, Janine, says her daughter Taylor has told her she is pregnant, not once, not twice, but as many as 10 times. Now that is a whole lot of grandbabies, right? But not really, because according to Janine, Taylor is a pathological liar who fakes pregnancies to trap boyfriends and get attention. See what I mean? My sister Taylor has lied about multiple pregnancies. When it comes to anything that's about pregnancy, she cannot be trusted. Taylor has faked two other pregnancies that I'm aware of. I believe it's likely a third, and there have been several miscarriages that I believe were also faked. I think Taylor fakes pregnancies because she thrives on the attention that she gets from them more than anything. I think Taylor keeps faking pregnancies and miscarriages because her ultimate goal seems to be to get the attention of whatever man she's with at the time. Nine years ago when Taylor was 14 was when she faked her first pregnancy. Her boyfriend in high school was trying to break things off with her and she told him she was pregnant. The very first pregnancy that she ever faked didn't last long at all before my parents sat her down and gave her a pregnancy test and made her pee on it in front of them and that was nipped in the bud. Five years later, Taylor claimed that she was pregnant again. Taylor told us that she was pregnant the day after her long-term boyfriend broke up with her. Taylor faked an ultrasound. She put it in a picture frame so we couldn't see the top part of who it belonged to. When I took a closer look at the photo, it was not Taylor's ultrasound. And I think after that happened, everyone was suspicious of any pregnancy following that. And because they all ended in miscarriages. But then she could always get pregnant so easily, too. I mean, she'd go from one guy to the next guy to the next guy, and it would happen so fast with every guy that she's pretty much ever been with. She said she had gotten pregnant. Taylor provides no proof of any pregnancies other than photos of pregnancy tests, but we never see them in person. There's no doctor visits. There's no paperwork. There's nothing. Well, when Taylor announced this past May that she was once again pregnant, Janine and Taylor's sister, Brianna, were very skeptical. But a sonogram convinced them that Taylor was finally telling the truth. In the spring, Taylor told us she was pregnant. Taylor showed me the ultrasound within a few weeks of her telling me she was pregnant. The first thing I did was look at the ultrasound to make sure her name and the doctor's name and the date was on there, and it was. And I thought, great, she really has a baby this time. When Taylor told me that she was pregnant, I had no reason not to believe her. I was really holding out hope that she was pregnant this time. I should have asked more questions and been less naive considering Taylor's past. I think Taylor faked this entire pregnancy. I am 99.9% .9 sure. I don't want to believe that Taylor pulled off such an elaborate scheme at our expense. Over the summer, we threw Taylor a gender reveal party. I'm nervous. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Nine. Eight. Eight. She had given my mother just an envelope that had a piece of paper in it that said, it's a girl. I think it is incredibly insane that she allowed us to throw a gender reveal party knowing that she was not pregnant. It's cruel. It's not nice at all. It's really terrible. It's sick. I was so excited.
Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless, anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open, I hate being broken I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go Decided to be having another grandbaby, I decided to throw her a Halloween themed baby shower. I went all out for this baby shower. I had a friend paint pumpkins with purple glitter saying it's a girl. I mean, she opened up gifts and she was happy and oh my gosh, look at this, look at this. Four days before Taylor's due date, she told her sister to call all of us and tell us that the baby had the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck. I asked if she was okay, and then I said, is she alive? And she said, no. Everyone was skeptical. We didn't know if it was real or not. I was thinking something feels off about this. This whole time, my sister was unaware that we knew she faked her pregnancy, so she kept playing the victim and just carried out her lies. 
Taylor did tell me that they were going to get the baby cremated. I had a friend call the funeral home to find out if a baby had been brought in. The funeral home never received a late-term baby. I cannot believe that she lied for the entire length of her pregnancy. She's lied to you how many times? <laughs> oh, countless. At least 10. At least 10 times. At least 10. And you said, I had no reason not to believe her. And then you said, <laughs> I couldn't believe that she was lying. So <laughs> I, I know what's wrong with her, and we'll get to that in a minute. What I'm wondering is, what the hell is wrong with you two? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. No. Well, okay. Okay. Yeah. It was different. It was time. different. With the ultrasound that she brought us, the very first thing I did was check her name, doctor, date, everything. So I went, oh, okay, there's really an ultrasound. It's a baby. And I'm not sure. There was a what? There was a baby. Well, there wasn't really one, but I thought there really was one after seeing that. She's lied to you nine times, and then she brings you this. Well, she's never brought us one with her name never. on it and the doctor's name before. And I think I somehow was under the impression that her boyfriend had been with her to the mm -hmm. ultrasound and seen the baby. And I don't know if someone told me that. I'm not sure. But if I said, well, if he'd seen it, there's really a baby there. I have two words for you. <laughs> and neither of them is idiot. Photoshop. <laughs> I mean, seriously, how long did it take you to discover that she got this off the internet once you decided to check? The Not night the baby died, supposedly. Yeah. That's so how long? The Nine night months. the babies died, through the tears of grief, you decided to check out where this came from. Yeah. How long did it take to find it on the internet? It took me less than a minute. Nine months, a gender reveal party, and a baby shower. Yeah. versus one minute to check. Yeah. After being lied to nine other times. Yeah. I, I go back to my original question. What the hell is wrong with you people? <laughs> Apparently a lot. <laughs> because I, really, I'm thinking, why does she do this? And then I, I'm, you two are intelligent women. You, you're very successful in your lives. You, you dress yourselves in the morning. You operate, <laughs> you operate motor vehicles. You, but you fell for this again. And I'm like... I'm wondering why, seriously, why you felt... For, I know you want a baby really bad. You'd love to have a oh, grandbaby, yeah, right? yeah, I would love another one. So you want it to be true. I, I truly get that. I didn't want her to be crazy is what I... Really. Yeah, I didn't, so, this is crazy. Well, that ship sailed. Yeah, I mean, obviously. You, she's done this nine times. Yeah. So then... The, and, and, and when she got pregnant this time would have been in June... No, no, March. 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 Yeah, okay. but we didn't know about it till May. Okay, well, yeah, you found out about it right. in spring, okay. And how was she getting along with her boyfriend about that time? Oh, jeez. Like most all of them, not very good. Yeah. About to break up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when she's oh. had these other pregnancies, how's she been getting along with her boyfriends about the time she gets pregnant? In every other pregnancy, it was the man wanted to leave her, and then she was pregnant. Yeah. And this time, it was going rocky. In the beginning, um, I think when she thought she was pregnant at first in March, it was rocky, and then she said she wasn't, and then again in May, she said, oh, I actually was pregnant. But I don't recall them having any relationship issues at that moment when she did announce it. Um, that, that I was aware of. I think she told me that there were relationships. She did? Yeah. Yeah? She did. Oh. Yeah, so now you he left her. her. Yeah. He did leave yeah. her. She was still living There's in the apartment. That. That's he right. did leave so her. So every other time she um, said she was pregnant, a boy was leaving her, and she reeled him back in with, oh, well, hold on, buddy, I'm pregnant. Yeah. In this picture where she's got her mouth open, just, oh, my God, she knows she's not pregnant. She's still sending you, saying, buy me some more stuff yes. for a baby I don't have. Yes. Did you? Hell no. And later, what is the truth? I mean, the truth is that I lied to you. I want some answers. What did you lie to us about? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Not only is she going to inherit her mother's overcrowded mansion. We're going up to the champagne room. If you can ride, why walk? But it comes with a price. One giant mess and an older sister who lives in the basement. It's not my responsibility to take care of Lori. Lori has been bullied in school. But she's 58. 
then on Friday. Ryan, God damn it. Stop. You don't have an anger problem. That's a relief. Get the f out. It's unbecoming and it's outrageous. That's Friday. You actually threw her a gender reveal party. Okay, yeah, I don't even know what the, uh, yeah, she handed me an envelope and I opened it and Yeah, said so it's you a girl. didn't just suspend disbelief. You actually were all in. You yeah, I went out of my way to make it special so she felt special. But that was real dumb. Yeah, well, it didn't work out. I mean, <laughs> no. and so what was the gender? A girl. A girl. Mhm. Mm I feel so embarrassed okay. now. And then so this was in June. Yeah. Okay, so then in October, mm -hmm. you throw her a baby shower. Yes. And so you invite people. Yeah. And they spend money and bring gifts. <laughs> yes. And you play games, and she's the center of attention, and you're doing all this. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And look, she's just having the time of her life. <laughs> I and bet. now, at this point, when in this picture where she's got her mouth open, just, oh, my God. She knows she's not pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Real mad. She admits that in her story that she had miscarried months before. At this point, she knows she's not pregnant. She's not even pretending to us. I don't know about y'all. But she hasn't actually told me no, that. She told Brianna that, but not me. Yeah. So she, she, she made me what? that she had lost the baby in August. Yeah. Right. So right. this is this is two months later right. after. Even in her story, she had lost the baby two mm -hmm. months earlier. So she's sitting here now knowing, even if she's telling the truth that time, knowing she's not pregnant. What did you say to these people that spent the money to buy these gifts? And, I haven't said anything yet. They don't know. They don't. No. I, this all kind of happened so fast, and okay. I thought we'd come here. Okay, first. you see oh, these big square things here? Yeah, hey. <laughs> she yeah. lied. We're sorry. Th these are cameras. <laughs> yeah. And, I, I do feel, I feel and, uh, really bad for we, yeah, everyone. It's very it, embarrassing. It is. Yeah. I'm horrified. Well, you need to make some calls because yeah, I do. I do. this is the number one show. And yeah. I mean, what a great way to tell someone, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there was a text exchange uh, between Taylor and you on 12-2. This was December 2nd. Yep. And Taylor, it's even cheaper now, photo of a stroller, it's the Maxi Casi Zelia stroller. You just have to click on the car seat stroller combo and select the stroller by itself. Janine, okay, awesome. Okay, this is two months after the baby shower. Yes. She's still sending you, saying, buy me some more stuff yes. for a baby I don't have. Yes. Did you? Hell no, no. I'm glad I didn't. But then four days later, back. she told you that... Two days later, she, she told me. She told that, that she miscarried. Uh-huh, yep. And what'd she tell you she did with the baby? She told us that she was going to have the baby cremated. She didn't want any of us involved in anything. Oh, no. Yeah, That's just that there were going to be pictures that she was going to take of the baby mm -hmm. and then show us when they were ready. Yeah. Okay, well, Taylor admits to faking four pregnancies in the past, but is adamant... She really was pregnant twice this year. However, she says she has a lot to come clean about to her family today. Really curious to know what that is. We'll find out after the break. I didn't tell my family I had a miscarriage because they cared more about me believing that I was going to be giving them a grandchild. I didn't want to lose that. One lie just turns into another, turns into a hundred, turns into a tangled web. I was in deep. And later, what did you do with all the presents that the people bought for the phantom baby? My sister even went through a phase where she was nesting. She had everything that a baby could ever need in her home. My sister had a bedside bassinet, a closet full of baby clothes and toys. She had a pack and play with a changing table on it that she got for her baby shower. She got a car seat and a baby swing. She really went the whole nine yards. That's why none of this makes any sense. What really scares me is that I believed that my sister was really pregnant and I think she believed it too.
Well, after discovering that Taylor forged the sonogram, she showed them in May, Janine and Brianna now believe Taylor was never pregnant and faked her miscarriage too. Taylor says she's here to once and for all come clean to her family. I lie because I can't help it. It's second nature to me. I was pregnant, but I miscarried and I didn't tell anybody. I continued to let everyone believe that I was pregnant up until my due date. The only two times that I have been pregnant are in my current relationship. I first got pregnant last year and miscarried in the beginning of this year. Another time, my boyfriend and I were broken up. I told him I was pregnant and I really wasn't. But a month later, I ended up getting pregnant. I showed my family a fake ultrasound where I was 12 weeks pregnant because I wanted them to believe that I was. I ordered the ultrasound online and it had my name on it, so it was actually made for me. But but it was doctored. I didn't tell my family I had a miscarriage because they cared more about me believing that I was going to be giving them a grandchild. I didn't want to lose that. One lie just turns into another, turns into a hundred, turns into a tangled web that feels impossible to untangle. I was in deep. When it came down to doing the gender reveal, I wrote the envelope myself and gave it to my mom. I was pregnant still. I obviously didn't know what the gender of my baby was at that point, and I was still lying about how far along I was. <laughs> As my due date approached, I thought about what I was going to do, that there was no way I could lie to my family about a birth story. I just thought I have to say anything just to kind of get them off my back. I lied and said that my baby had died. I don't care if my family doesn't believe that I was ever pregnant, because I was. I don't blame them because I brought this upon myself, but in my heart, I know the truth. Okay, Taylor, I'm glad you're here. You know, there's something in the open that they play right before we come out here that says today is going to be a changing day in your life. And they've kept that for 18 years because that's my intention when people come here, that this experience will be a changing day in your life because you have a well-learned pattern, pathological pattern of lying, telling half-truths, lying by omission, misdirecting, all sorts of things. And it's real easy for you to default to that. And there are reasons why, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I want you to make a conscious choice to do today differently. I want you to make a conscious choice today, a life decision today. I'm gonna absolutely tell the unvarnished truth. So what is the truth? You've run these people around the mulberry bush, so what is the truth? I mean, the truth is that I lied to you. I mean, not just to you guys, but to everybody. What did you lie to us about? Hang on a second. Before you open your mouth. Now I know. Don't answer reflexively. I won't. You have to make a conscious decision to tell the truth. Yeah. I wasn't pregnant. I lied to you. So you were never pregnant? Yeah, that's true. I'm glad that you decided to be honest about that. It's habitual. I don't know. <clears throat> Hard to break out of a pattern that I feel like I've... <laughs> in my entire life. I feel like people should know too that I never did anything that I did or lied to you guys because I wanted to hurt you. It's just about saving myself from hurt. That's all it ever was. Reflexive decisions in order to save myself from a greater pain. I mean, you know. That's why I lied to my boyfriend. That's why I told him in the first place. It's because I thought that it would spare me the pain of, you know, going separate ways. And that was a mistake. And I think I knew at the time that it was, but it just felt like I, I had to. It just felt like I didn't have a choice. I want some answers. 
I want to know how much he knew, when he knew it, because on that day that the baby was being, you know... He didn't know. He didn't delivered. Know. Who were we texting? You were absolutely texting. Okay, well, when I texted him and I said, I'm real sorry that you had to be there and witness your not-alive baby be born. That's got to be very difficult. No parent should have to go to through that. Much. And he responded with, thank you, that means a lot. Why would he say that if he wasn't there for any baby? He didn't know what else to say. I think he just kind of protected me at the end. But it is the truth that he didn't know until then. And at that point, we discussed how I was going to tell you guys. It is unfair to make up a baby for us to love so that you can have a nice party and feel loved. That is not why I did it. I didn't want a party. I wanted you. Everybody on Team Boy, let me hear you say Team Boy. Team, team boy. boy! And everybody on Team Girl? Team, team Girl! Whoa, that sounds pretty impressive. Okay, so. Three, two, one. Yeah, it appears to me that you really enjoy being the center of attention there. I think that's probably true. Why don't you just slip on your acting shoes and just let everybody feel that way, so excited and happy? I mean, I understand why you're hurt. Like, I mean, you completely, like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you deserve the right to say those things. I mean, yeah. I don't understand. think you really do understand. Oh, no. That was a really hard year, Taylor. Your sister and your brother got married three weeks from each other. And yeah, there was another baby born. I was, I was there. The hoops we had to jump through financially to pull everything off so that you felt loved and that baby felt welcomed and excited is insane. Yep. You know, if you want a birthday party, any kind of party, I'd be happy to throw you a party to show you how much we love you. It is unfair to make up a baby for us to love so that you can have a nice party and feel loved. That is not why I did it. I feel like this is part of like the problem between us, Mom, is that you think that like I like what I wanted a party. Seriously, I wanted a party. I didn't want a party. I didn't want a party. I wanted you. I okay. wanted you. You've always had me, Taylor. You've always said that, too. You've always tried to tell me that you love me and care about me in the same mm -hmm. way as everybody else. But Which is I true. still believe that's not true. What? And I think how I feel matters. How I feel about that matters. Your feelings do matter, absolutely. But you, you stay away from the family. You don't spend hardly any time with us. Even when you live with us, you stayed in your room most of the time. Every pregnancy that you've ever faked, and for whatever reason you did, I, I want to know, and the answer should be nothing. What did you gain from them, and what did you not learn that just kept you doing it over and over and over again? I think the fact that you have to ask that question is kind of maybe part of a larger problem, because I feel like no matter what has happened in the family, you guys still don't really understand yeah, but The me. problem is that you faked pregnancies at all. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I mean, mean what, what kind of relationship painful, are you trying feel... to build with us by, by lies? I You're, wasn't... The foundation it, is lies. It, I, wish I, could, I wish I could explain it. Well, I'm going to help you explain it. But I don't know. I, I, and I will help you explain it, because I think I understand part of it. But... What did you do with all the presents that the people bought for the phantom baby? They're just in my house. They're just kind of packed in my closet at the moment, just kind of where I can't see them. Well, Taylor's grandmother, uh, Diane, believes Taylor is a pathological liar who's never been pregnant. She claims Taylor faked a whole different pregnancy while living with her. We'll talk about that after the break. I don't believe Taylor's pregnant. I kept telling myself, maybe it's her weight. That's why I can't see her looking pregnant. I think that I knew in the back of my mind that something didn't feel right. Taylor has been a liar and a thief for most of her life. 
You can't leave anything out that Taylor wants or she'll take it. Taylor steals makeup, clothes. One time, Taylor had been house-sitting for us, and when we came home, she was wearing a shirt that looked just like a new shirt I had bought. I asked her if she was wearing my shirt, and she denied it. I went to the closet, and the shirt was gone. When I came back out to the kitchen, she had gone outside. When she came back in, she was wearing a different shirt. I asked her where my shirt was, and she said, I've been wearing this shirt the whole time, like I was insane. Taylor likes to play games. She really enjoys messing with people. I'm sorry? You think that I like to mess with people, but it's never been about, like, playing games or messing with you. It's more of, like, a hiding. Like, I'm, a, I'm afraid, I'm ashamed. Oh, I, I, like, I was wearing a shirt. Like, that specific story, I just felt like my only option for some reason was to like run away from the situation and, and hide it. Well, Thanks. we'll talk about that. Taylor's grandmother, Diane, says Taylor is desperate. She thinks she's very lonely and she thinks she's incapable of surviving on her own. My granddaughter, Taylor, is not honest about anything. Taylor has a very interesting skew on reality. I don't believe she's been pregnant. I'd love to believe it, but I think she's just lied about it every single time. When Taylor was 18, she moved in here with us, told us she was expecting a baby, and we believed her. So I decided to meet her at her doctor's appointment. Taylor never showed up. I waited for an hour, and finally the doctor's office was nice enough to tell me that they did not have a patient there by that name. This time when Taylor came to us and told us she was pregnant, she had the goods in her hands. I mean, she had an ultrasound that looked like it was as legitimate as could be. So we'd have no reason to say we didn't believe her. She talked about exciting to have another great-grandchild. When we learned that the ultrasound was fake, I didn't even know that you could do something like that. Not in a million years would I have thought that that was not real. I was livid that the ultrasound was fake. I was suspicious. I think that I knew in the back of my mind that something didn't feel right. Taylor is overweight, so I think I kept telling myself maybe it's her weight. That's why I can't see her looking pregnant. That's maybe why she's not feeling the baby as much. We decided not to confront Taylor. She told me hospital had given her the name of a funeral home that would cremate the baby. I just kind of played along because I just wanted to see how far she'd take this. She told me that they had to buy an urn, and I said to her, well, Grandpa and I will be more than happy to do that for you. And immediately on my phone, I started getting links sent by her for urns that she liked. When I got those links from Taylor, part of me was like, you have got to be kidding me. I think it's sick that Taylor would do that to our family, and none of us deserve this. Well, joining us via Polycom is Diane. Uh, Diane, you've been listening to everything so far, correct? Yes. Uh, what do you have to add? Well, I'm glad that Taylor is admitting that she's lying to us all the time. We just want her to have a wonderful life, uh, and we don't know what to do for her to get her there. What do you think is her motivation? I think she's learned to survive this way. She plays the victim, and she let, has people feel sorry for her. They open their door, come stay with us. You can pay us some rent. She runs the gambit with that, and then when she never pays anybody anything or steals from them, she throws them out, and then she finds somebody else to start all over again with. I see an awful lot of people <clears throat> that default to manipulation, default to deceit because they're unwilling to test the theory that they're good enough and that people would just want to be with them without the deceit, without the manipulation, and they're afraid to find out. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, though. Like, I mean, you're spot on, yeah. It feels like I, I guess I've never really truly felt as though I've been um, accepted or wanted or loved. Taylor says she so badly wanted to be pregnant that she thinks at times she convinced herself. We'll talk about that after the break. I do resent my mom because of my childhood. 
Taylor wasn't really a very happy child. We moved a lot, and a lot of things were hard for her to deal with. I was emotionally, physically, and sexually abused as a child. I think Taylor's trauma is a big part of why she tells these lies. I do feel like my mom never sought the help for me that I really needed for the abuse that I suffered. I'm trying to get us closer and let her know that I love her and she's always wanting to punish me for things she feels I did to her. What do you think about what she's saying? <clears throat> I think it is incredibly fair that she feels like she wasn't helped and taken care of the way that she deserved and needed to be. And I didn't know about the sexual abuse until 2016. And you're an adult. And I said to you that we supported you 100%. If that was to call this person out and press charges, that we, got, we had your back. If it was to go through therapy, we had your back. If it was to just deal with it in any way, that we were there for you. You also told me that you had felt off about it always. But I didn't know why. And you never, like, I mean, you never asked me. And, like, we were, there was never any supervision with somebody, with the, when there was an age gap. I mean, there, there are a lot of things there that there I a, thought about extensively and thought, I mean, just imagine being a child and wondering, why didn't my mom protect me? Wow. And it's not just from the sexual abuse, from the physical abuse, too. You what? didn't protect me there either. And that's part of the reason why I've never felt like I could trust you. I want to. I, I'm Taylor, here because I, have... I want to have a relationship with you because I want to be different. I'm curious what you heard her say. <laughs> that it was my fault that she's made all the decisions she has. That is really? Not... <laughs> That's not at all what she said. I've never said that. N me not making sure things happen for her and protecting her and all of those things has led her down the path where she makes the choices that she does now. Oh, so. it's led me to resent you. It's led me to resent you. There is a lot of resentment there. It has nothing to do with not, I loved you. Mm -hmm. You leaned on me for emotional support and I was there and I felt important to you for the first time in my life. I felt important to you at 13, 13 years. And it damaged me to emotionally support you as a child. Yeah, that wasn't fair. That was I, mean, hard. I understand that. No wonder there's so much resentment and misunderstanding between us, and I will not claim it as an excuse for what I've done. I own everything I've done, so everybody here and everyone who watches this and Dr. Phil and you and the family can all hear it. I own everything I've done. I'm here because I want to take responsibility, because I don't want to hide, and it's scary and it's hard, but I feel like we can't talk without this, without, like, and that... Well, that is just makes me incredibly sad. I would reach out to you and tell you that I love you. I want you to know how much I love you. I've, I've resented you, you know? I, well, I, I kind of resent you, too. I'm, I wonder why. I'm sure you do. And yeah. I mean, like, I... I resent I grieving over it. a baby that didn't exist. That was I, I resent having to go through this all the time. I resent that I have to tell everybody that we know that came to the party that there was no baby. I know. I, I make know it and make excuses. I resent all of that. I, 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 I didn't think about that aspect. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Because that's why, I want that's to why I'm here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so, here. So, <laughs> what's to be done here? I'm going to give you my thoughts after the break. My theory about why you've done this is... It's a pure power play. Um, it gives you personal power. It gives you personal magnetism. It gives you a way to command attention and get the people in your world to attend to you. People don't do things repeatedly without a payoff. And your payoff is you apparently get a different kind and a different level and a different intensity of social currency when they think you're pregnant than when they think you aren't. Now, why would she default to that? Um, listen, I've, I've never been a young woman who has been violated physically and sexually and then left to my own devices to deal with that. 
but I've worked with a lot that have been. And that's not something that has a beginning and an end. It's something that changes who you are. And healing those wounds is beyond your skill set as a parent and a mother. Yes, yeah, I know. In fact, the truth is you need the same healing. And you know it as well as I do. Let me bring you that help. And walk this walk together as women. Grow together, heal together, and have each other's backs. And you're going to see that as you begin to feel better about yourself, treat yourself with dignity and respect, you will take better care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, in every possible way. And you will see that happen, and you'll see it happen with you. Okay. okay. Fair enough? Fair enough. Can you do this? Yes. Yes. Can you be part of this? Yeah. Okay. All right. mm. I want to thank all of my guests today. Um, for more information about today's show, log on to drphil.com. We'll see you next time.